Okay, this is part seven. We're gonna finish this. Hopefully soon. Mm. Number 29, The Foo Fighters' Best of You. Finally, a song I can get excited about. <laughs> Finally. Yes, Bruce, you, you, you can wake up from your nap now, dude. Yes, you're on now. Yeah, you're on. Even with my eyes open for one of the parts, but Foo Fighters, awesome band, great energy, amazing recorded, amazing live, amazing sitting in a room looking at each other, not doing a damn thing. The Foo Fighters are just that badass. We are the Foo Fighters. If there is any, any, any good thing in the world that came from Kurt Cobain's death, and this is the only one, it's the Foo Fighters. I completely agree with you. The Foo Fighters are an awesome band. Huge catalog of great hits, and this song was no exception. Best of You definitely deserves its place in the top 50. I think it should have cracked the top 20, but you know, at least it's represented at a good spot at the countdown. It is nice, nice spot there. All right, uh, 28 Madonna's music. Um, Madonna doing techno style or that techno beat? No. If it, could have, if it could have been done in a different style, I would have said yes. Everybody just, it's, it's your dance song, it's your uh, Madonna doing the whole turning herself into a cartoon in the video. You know, music makes me feel happy and, you know, she's done better. I, I can respect Madonna for her accomplishments in music. I can respect Madonna for wanting to reinvent herself for the new millennium, but this song was god awful. Uh, I don't know if I would judge it that harshly, but I certainly didn't like it. Um, I, I'm going to pull one out of the punk band playbook. Man, her early stuff was so much better. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, I remember being a kid sitting in front of the TV and watching, li you know, listening to, uh, Like a Virgin or, um, Material Girl or something like that, and it just. Uh, of course, this is also back in the days when MTV actually played music videos. No, this was they wasn't did? even MTV. It was, it was just an afternoon video show that came on Channel Nine or something. Oh, okay. But, wow. Yeah. Um, back in the day. Yeah, it was way back in the day. This was, I mean, I was either six or seven, so it was either 1983 or 1984. Um, but you know. I, I certainly wouldn't put that song among her, her strongest releases. Yeah, to me, Madonna was just trying to take a cue of Cher, who had reinvented herself like five years prior with Believe and doing the whole techno pop For thing. For the 75th time. Yeah. But Cher did it better, in my opinion. There you go. All right, 27, Usher featuring Ludacris and Little John Lee. Yeah, yeah! yeah, yeah. When the song first came out, I liked it, but then it's like every time I went to an Angel game and somebody would come up, it's like, yeah, yeah, it's like, no, no, stop playing the song, you're drilling it into my head. It, it's one of those songs again. That's yes, pop that's music the point of a pop song. No, you're not to supposed drill to drill it no, into people's heads. No, yes, it is. To the point where they get as bent out of shape about it as you are right now talking about it. There you go. It well, goes back to what Bruce said earlier about Lady Gaga. You're still talking about it. did it. its job. I love that song. I was not the hugest Usher fan when he burst on the scene, but starting with the, I believe it's the 8701 album, and then the Confessions album, which I believe this is off of, I started to change my tune around about Usher. He took mm. it to another level. Mm -hmm. Again, he reinvented himself, and success has come his way all the way up until he decided to reinvent himself by signing Justin Bieber and now yeah look what that's getting and the damn good thing Justin Bieber's not on this list at all yeah because then we would really rip him one I don't care how old he is I'm pretty sure Justin debuted in 2010 am I right don't know don't care what's okay. that all right good idea. yeah because you know let's not talk about Justin Bieber uh next 26 the White Stripes Seven Nation Army Hmm. I like the White Stripes. They're a good band. They have a good, they have a 
They were they were okay. They were you know just something new, something very unique. Well, not really new. I mean the that uh, that type of um, soul infused rock music has been very popular on the East Coast for uh, you know for a number of years before it you know before it got popular. Um, I can take it or leave it honestly. Mm -hmm. I don't feel one way or the other about it. It's a good song. I like the White Stripes. I like Seven Nation Army. Um, probably the weirdest thing that I can come up with to say regarding that song is that a couple years ago the Oak Ridge Boys did a cover of it. And wow. their country doo-wop type of style that they if you do. don't know who the Oak Ridge Boys are, go ask your parents or maybe your grandparents. There you go. I like that one. Alright, 25. Nelly is hot in her. <laughs> Not hot in here, hot in her. Yes, yeah, like double R. Double R with an E at the end. Another, another song that did its job, but everywhere you looked, that song was playing in the clubs. I gotta say though, I used to DJ back in the day. Y'all remember me doing this? Oh yes. Not once did I put on that so song and actually see girls taking their clothes off though. It wasn't yeah. Well, well, some of them didn't shouldn't have had to have. Yeah. Some of them you didn't want to see. Exactly. But I didn't see it happen. So that song so was not as effective as it was supposed to so be. So Nelly needed to work on that a little bit, I think. But like I say, good song. Good song. Anything? It did what it was supposed to do. Got, got asses on the dance floor. Along with the next one, 24, Missy Elliott, Get Your Freak On. Those two those two songs back to back in the club, there you go. And then they'll just drop on the floor. It's like, it's so hot in here, we're going to get our freak on and just drop where we stand. I don't think that's a club I'd want to be in. <laughs> really don't. Wouldn't want to see all that. It, it depends on... Yeah, no, I'm just going to um, I like Missy. Missy. Yeah. I like Missy Elliott a lot. It was a really simple beat too. I mean, it wasn't anything fancy. It was just really simple, and it made you want to nod your head to it. Twenty-three. Pink's get the party started. Didn't reach number one. Only reached number four. Good song. Good video. Pink's debut. No. No. Mm -hmm. no. That was her second album. This is the lead-off single to her second album. They said the countdown. It was her essentially her coming out party because that 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 song flew her to the top. Yeah, shot her to the top. Right? Whatever, whatever phrase you want to use. Yeah, because I mean, Pink actually started out as an R and B artist. She was on uh, Babyface and L.A. Reid's label. Mm -hmm. She was, you know, she was uh, she was an R and B artist when she started. Back um, in the days when I remember what Babyface looked like. Yeah. <laughs> Inside awesome. joke. Well, we'll get um, to that one. But uh, I like Pink. I like her. I like her attitude. Um, I, you know, I'm I'm pretty cool with I'm cool with her music. I'm not gonna go out and buy it or anything, but I like the vibe. I like the energy. Um, yeah. Pink rocks. Yeah. And she's hot. So. And she is. Yes. Yeah. She's very hot. Twenty two. Alicia Keys. Fallen. Oh God. Another song that just would not stop. And it made the piano cool. It's if, if for real? Yeah. For real? Yeah. What? Really? What? It made the pianos really? cool. Really? Really? Don't really? Yes. Really? Made it real? Yeah. Made the piano cool? Elton John certainly didn't make it cool. I'm a fuck. Okay, you need to get off this stage. We're, we are evicting you. You are kicked show. off your own show. No, I'm not. You. No. I will admit that Alicia Keys I'm brought sexy back to the piano. <laughs> But or A will be hosted by Bruce Edwards. I'm sorry. Alicia Keys. Oh, wow. I liked Alicia Keys back here because she was sexy without having to flaunt over the top sexy. She was sexy I think without she sold, being trashy. Yeah, I think she sold out her style a little as she got a little bit further into her career and started becoming the slutty sexy that everyone always sees in the music videos. But back here, she was sophisticated sexy. And that made her even more sexy. Yeah, well, you don't like my opinions too bad. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, Ellen John did not make the piano cool. What the... God damn it, Mike. Get off it, alright? Go ahead, Bruce. Sorry, Bruce. I was, uh... Bless you? Thanks. I was, um... 
I was thinking about the whole Jennifer Lopez thing from earlier. Alicia Keys. That's the girl from the block. Yeah. Okay. She made that type of music. She had that type of vibe. That's a girl from the block. Okay. J-Lo, get off that shit. Only block you on is on Rodeo Drive, ho. Uh. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Alicia Keys. Win. Yes. That's all I can say. Should have been top 20. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That That album is amazing if you have not heard it where the hell have you been seriously because that album turned 10 years old this year can you believe it i believe it i mean we're, we're si everyone's sitting here caught up in the fact that you know shit like nirvana never mind turned 20 this year and that's all great but alicia keys songs in a minor is 10 years old too where the fuck did those 10 years go it seems like a year or two ago. I don't want to think about it. It seemed like only a year or two ago that I was listening to Fallen and A Woman's Worth on the radio. It doesn't seem like it was ten years ago. Is it just me? No, no. definitely not. Okay. Twenty one, Jay Z's ninety nine problems. Wow. This is another one to me that just shows the genius of some people because this is another Rick Rubin production. The same man that was responsible for Johnny Cash's Hurt was responsible for this song. And I don't know what it is about this song to me, but every version of 99 Problems I have heard is a fucking kick-ass version. Whether it's Rick Rubin's original version from the Black Album, whether it's the mashup with the Beatles off of the Grey Album where they use the Helter Skelter beat, whether it's the version off of the Jay-Z vs. Metallica double black album where they use the Sad But True beat. Or it's the Linkin Park and Jay-Z Collision Chorus version that uses um, One Step Closer. I like that one. Every best. version of that song has been a fucking kick-ass version of that song. I like that one the best. I can thank Rick Rubin for one thing. One thing only. One word. And it's a word that if there are any metal heads out there, you already know what I'm talking about. One thing that the world can thank Rick Rubin for. Slayer. Slayer. There you go. Number 20, we're going back into the pop world, Britney Spears Toxic. Can we talk about Slayer some more? Did Slayer yes. have a version of Toxic? Yeah, well, that would well, be well, let's of talk about Slayer. I don't want to talk about Britney Spears. Go ahead and talk about Slayer. Go right ahead. That, that'll be a great way to... And now this, this, go right ahead. Go ahead. Slayer. <laughs> that's pretty much Do you want you Slayer need. to slay Britney Spears? That's all, that's all you need. Shouldn't it be more like, Slayer. It could be. There's a Jerry Lynn reference again. Satan. Because like, cause, cause not to knock you, but you sounded kind of like, Slayer. <laughs> Slayer. Yeah, burrito for lunch. <laughs> no, that'll be his dinner tonight. Uh, that's pretty much all you need. Still love a nachos. Slayer. That's all you need. No nachos. This guy. No nachos. All right, we've cracked the top twenty. Nineteen more to go. And I promise you, we're we'll probably gonna do two more episodes. Probably. Parts. Yeah, two more parts. Parts. Same difference. 